This is the second part of a video series for Reproduction in Plants Science Module 2, Lesson 1. In this video, you will recognize and understand the processes in, a sexual, in the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. What are the processes in the sexual reproduction in plants? Now, there are four main processes. There's pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal, and germination. We will be going through in detail these processes over the next few slides. Starting off pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of the flower. The pollen can come from the same flower or another flower. So if it's from another flower, it's cross-pollination. If it's for the, from the same flower, it's self-pollination. Insects, birds and wind, all these help to carry the pollen from the anther to the stigma. Remember that the anther is the male reproductive part and the stigma is the female reproductive part. If you're unsure about this, please go please uh, go back and watch the previous video. The flowers that are pollinated by birds and insects are usually large and colorful. Some have a very pleasant smell too. Why? This is to attract the birds and insects to go to them, right? Now, fertilization. When the pollen lands on the stigma, each pollen produces a pollen tube. This tube grows from the stigma through the style to the ovary. In the ovary are the ovules and these ovules contain the egg cell. Now, when the male reproductive cell, which is the pollen, fuses with the female reproductive cell, which is the egg, Fertilization happens. Both the male and the female reproductive parts are required and this is why we call it sexual reproduction. So very quickly, the pollen lands here and this is the what we call the stigma. And when the pollen lands here, it, a pollen tube is produced which goes all the way through the style to the ovary, right? And the, when the uh, pollen, the cell and the ovules, they match, then when the pollen fuses with the ovule, fertilization happens. And this is how fertilization happens in plants, in sexual reproduction in plants. Now let's look at what happens after fertilization. Most of the flower parts will drop off, like the petals, the anther, everything, they will all drop off. The ovary, which remains, will develop into the fruit and the ovules will develop into the seeds. So these seeds you see over here, these were initially the ovules. And this whole fruit is the ovary. Alright? The next process in the sexual reproduction in plants is seed dispersal. First thing we need to know is why do plants disperse their seeds? Right now, dispersal of fruits and seeds help to scatter the fruits and seeds away from the parent plant. This reduces competition between parent plants and the young plant, and so it prevents overcrowding, like you see here. There are too many plants that are together, and because of that, they compete for the same nutrients, the same water, the same sunlight. If the mother plant is over here and the mother plant managed to disperse the seeds so that the young plant is over here, there is no competition because they are very far apart. However, if the mother plant is here and the young plant is here, they will compete for the same kind of soil, water and everything. So how do plants disperse their seeds? Now, we've got animal dispersal, water dispersal, and wind dispersal. 
We'll be going through them in detail over the next few slides. Oh, we also have splitting and explosive action. I forgot about that one. So now looking at animal disposal. Animals eat their fruits and then throw away their seeds. Like mango, right? You can't eat this mango, uh, this mango seed because it's very, very big. So animals will usually throw it away. And so that's dispersing them. Some animals eat the seeds and pass them out in droppings, for example, this guava, right? And others, like this mimosa plant, the seeds get stuck on the animal's body because they have hooks and also helping to disperse them. Moving on to water disposal. For plants that grow in or near the water, water disposal is a very, very good idea. Now, plants drop the, foods, the fruit or seeds into the water. These fruits and seeds can float. As you can see, this coconut, right? It can float. They get carried by the water to somewhere else. And um, why can they float? Is because they usually have waterproof coverings or fibrous husks which help to trap air and help them float, like the coconut you see here. Next up, wind disposal. These are some seeds, some fruits that are dispersed by wind. Seeds are usually light and small, like the lalang seeds right here. They can be easily carried by the wind and some of them have wing-like structures. Some of them even have hair, like again, as you can see over here, it, they've got hair to help them fly easier and makes them, allows them to be easily carried by the wind. And now we have got the splitting way of seed disposal. This here you see is a rubber plant. Rubber plants. Now, what happens here is that the fruits split open when ripe and shoot the seeds out in all directions and thus helping to disperse the seeds. The last process in the sexual reproduction in plants is germination. Now, seeds need air, water and warmth to germinate. The root of a baby plant grows out of the seeds, as you can see over here. The plant is still unable to make food and it gets its nutrients from the food stored in the seed leaves. So, This is the seed leaf and this is what provides the young plant with its food since it can't photosynthesize. When the shoot appears, when this shoot appears, the plant can now photosynthesize and can make its own food so the seed leaf drops as you can see here. And that's germination. Now let's look at the reproduction in non-flowering plants. Non-flowering plants are plants that do not produce flowers, for example, the bird's nest fern, and so they do not produce seeds. Now, because of this, they undergo asexual reproduction. Remember, this is not sexual, it's asexual reproduction. They produce spores which grow into new plants. Now, spores are very, very small and are found on the underside of a leaf. Once the spore bags are ripe, spores are dispersed and can grow into a new plant. That is how they reproduce. And that's it for this entire topic. I hope you understood. Again, if you do not understand anything, please go back, rewind and rewatch it. I'm sure you will be able to understand it. Thank you. Bye bye.